Good afternoon and welcome to Follow Your Brush. This is Pam. Uh, thank you for liking and subscribing. And I know I have some new subscribers. I don't know your names right here in front of me, but uh, I see my numbers keep going up. So thank you so much for, for joining me. I am just a watercolorist on an adventure and I like to explore and try things and just include you if you're interested as well in my adventures. <clears throat> I've been painting with watercolor for about four years now and uh, it's always open to new things and surprises and um, I love it. I just love it. I'm addicted. I'm like there needs to be a group I should go to that says, hi, my name is Pam and I'm addicted to watercolor. I truly am. This week I've been playing with some handmade pigments. A Gallo is one of my favorite, most used colors in my own personal practice. I first tried them a couple years ago and they're sold from Assisi, Italy and they are handmade. And once a month, they have a um, they go on sale. And actually, Jackson's Art Supply in the UK now um, also sells them. Um, but they because they're handmade, they're only stocked and sold monthly. Um, so we, you have to kind of keep an eye out for when the sale is coming. Generally, the last Sunday of the month. I love a Gallo, and I use them frequently. Uh, this last time I purchased their new set of natural three number three i have the other uh the other set previously from last year so i wanted to try this these are a little bit different though and that's what i wanted to talk to you about today and explain why then i also had ordered and talked about um and did a, showed you a little um review or testing of the paints from art of soil also handmade paints from a gal in Wyoming. These are fabulous and fun. And if you if you enjoy exploring new things, then you know by all means give them a try. Um, if you're just happy with what you have and you just want to sit and paint, then by all means do that too. I'm like a little kid though. I see something new. I'm like, oh, how does that work? How does this work? How does that work? What I've done, and I'm doing this video because I've discovered handmade paints, pigments are a little different and they have different properties. Um, they can react differently. So first of all, I have wet them to kind of wake them up. They need to sit a little bit before you begin to dip your brush. So I'm going to show you some of the things that I have discovered. Uh, let me talk about a gallo first. I'm gonna put on this side. Um, I Like I say, I've used a gallo paints for a couple years now and I really, really love them. I just, I love, I love how they re-wet. I love the consistency. Look how beautiful that is. This is um, one of their blues. I have a pa one palette is nothing but greens, and I absolutely adore that palette. Here's their lilac. Beautiful color. Now, the thing that's different about this palette is that some of these are granulating, and you actually can see some of this here as this begins to settle into the paper. And I've discovered it's not enough to just swatch a paint and get an idea of what it's gonna do. You really kind of find out when you start to play with it and paint. So when I was using this palette for the first time, this particular color, this very first one, this yellow, took me a while to re-wet and to actually pick up some color. And then when I did paint with it, gorgeous color, quite granulating. And perhaps you can even see there's the pigment that it picks up and leaves on my paper. 
You can see a little bit better there. Can you see that? Let me zoom in a little bit. See if you can see that the pigment particles that it leaves. I get a nice healthy dose here on my brush. You see the pigment particles that are in there? It's a, for granulating. And I enjoy granulating paint with um, textured paper. It's going to show up more. Come back out just a little bit. Uh, the next color, which is an orange, also is quite granulating. And you can see that as well. Now, because my other A Gallo palettes are not as granulating as this particular palette, I actually thought something was wrong with this color. It's called Still de Grain Light. S-T-I-L-D-E-G-R-A-I-N light. I was having trouble re-wetting it. It's a gorgeous color. And then it was so textured, I thought perhaps something was wrong with it. So I contacted the company and asked them about it. And to my delight and surprise, actually, I did hear back from the owner of A Gallo. Uh, personally, and she explained to me the fact that this is actually quite a priceless color or, or pricey, I don't know how, valuable, let me put it that way, pigment. It's difficult and time-consuming for the pigment to be created under the right circumstances, the right heat, boiling it, the soil to a certain degree to get this pigment. So she said that it was a actually kind of a bold choice for them to put it in this palette because it is different than their other paints. Their other paint, this particular palette is, um, the entire palette is more of a granulating palette. Here's the green, I like this one too. So here's what I have found and I want to pass on to you. Every paint choice we make when we change brands, it's like getting a new car and maybe you're used to driving an automatic, but then you drive, you purchase you purchase one and it's a manual, it's a stick shift and you don't know how to drive a stick shift yet. So it's a matter of getting to know your paints. This is from the Art of Soil. You can also see, let me do a lighter color. This is their yellow ochre. These do re-wet a little easier than, or more quickly, let me put it that way. It's not a problem with the paint, it's a problem with the artist. Let me zoom in on this one. And see the pigment. Hopefully you can see that better. You can see the granulation. It's not actually it's not a problem at all. It's just a matter of getting to know your paints and playing with them a while and getting to know what they do. They become like our friends. You know, um, we have some that we go to over and over some that we like. This is a this is their blue ochre. You can see the granulation in that one, can't you? Make sure I'm in the screen, not my head. See the little granulation pigments? I'm also wondering if perhaps if I use a um, hot press paper that it might flow better on that. So I'm getting to know them. And I want to encourage you when you try a new paint, it's like you're trying and you're getting to know a new person, a new friend, um, somebody to hang out with at, in your studio. So it takes time. And I encourage you to um, 
if you're so inclined to try new paints, try, try new things. Someone else had a question in the group this morning about core, Q-O-R. Core paints are, have a binder that um, causes them to what we call whoosh. So they love wet on wet. Let me show you some of this, a gallo wet on wet. Here's just my water. So let's see how this does wet on wet. It's a beautiful color. I just was unfamiliar with the having it so textured. So it's taking me time to get to know it. And I wanted to address that with you because don't write off something if you haven't had a chance to play with it or just your first impression might be, oh, I don't like this or there's something wrong with this paint. And I appreciate the fact that the owner uh, of A Gallo wrote me back personally to explain the colors and how they're made. And having just purchased this Book of Earth actually helped me to understand that a little bit better. Um, so I'm just doing this video to let you know that there are different paint qualities, different paint. Let me pull something out here from my uh, Daniel Smith, actually, just to maybe show you a difference. Here's a Nicolazo yellow. This is Daniel Smith. And you see it doesn't have that granulation. So it just goes on smooth and buttery. And most of my A Gallo colors re-wet and go on in that fashion. So this surprised me, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a different type of paint that I need to get myself accustomed to. Um, I told someone, it's like I learned life lessons from my watercolor. You learn to go with the flow. You learn to adjust and adapt, to expect the unexpected and embrace it. And that's the way it is with these colors as well. So if you're thinking of venturing into handmade colors, go for it. Uh, try them. Uh, you can start out small with just couple pigments if you wish from any of these companies and um, these are just two that I have tried the uh, this is my first palette from the art of soil and I I do like it it does dry a little lighter so you need to expect that this does as well but a gallo has a wonderful reputation in fact um, if you follow dr. Otto Kano on YouTube she's a expert in pigments and color and she loves a gallo and i don't know that she's done a review of the art of soil but i'm enjoying them so i just wanted to pop on and let you know that don't be afraid to try new things and if it doesn't work out like you thought it was going to give it a chance play with it try it and find out how you can work that into your painting practice and process and become friends it's a good, great life lesson. If there's something you don't know about, take a minute, get to you know it, get acquainted, play with it, try it, and become best friends. Talk to you later. Thanks for following, and keep on following your brush. Bye.